Prostate cancer poses a huge burden on Western society. Here in Australia, over 20,000 new diagnoses uh, happen on an annual basis, and there are over 3,000 prostate cancer-specific deaths on a yearly basis. It is the most common solid cancer, with the exception of skin cancers being diagnosed in men. The way that we diagnose prostate cancer has evolved significantly over the last decade and a half from a standard PSA test that was followed up usually with a random non-targeted biopsy to now standard screening practice in most uh, Western nations using an MRI scan as an integral tool of how we achieve a diagnosis. In today's video, I wanted to highlight for you specifically uh, some of the main features associated with an MRI scan uh, and uh, answer those questions for you. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Charles Schubert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located here on the Gold Coast in Australia. Please, as always, if you get benefit from the video, subscribe to our channel, give the video a thumbs up and leave your comments, your questions in the comments section down below so that we may all uh, learn about this process and share our knowledge uh, in a collaborative way. Okay, let's get into it. So historically, the way that we would screen for prostate cancer would be with a PSA test. There are lots of uh, discussions about the utility of a PSA test and the potential for inaccuracies when using a PSA test. I don't want to get into those today, but to highlight the traditional paradigm, which was you had a PSA test. If there were concerns with the PSA, men would then be evaluated with a transrectal prostate biopsy. In essence, there was no image guidance uh, the biopsy was performed uh, through the bowel and there were intrinsic issues obviously related to that. More recently, and this really has developed over the last decade and a half following the advent of MRI scans. Now, MRI scans have been around for a lot longer than the last decade and a half, but what did change round about that time was an evolution in the strength of that technology and also in software processing to allow us to get a better, more detailed image inside the prostate. Now, a, an MRI scan is not like traditional uh, imaging. It's not like an x-ray. It's not like a CT scan. In effect, it is a big magnet. And the best way to think about it is it's a magnet that causes vibration of water molecules. And from that vibration and a software interpretation of that, we can get anatomical features and we can also get more specific characteristics such as density and also blood flow or perfusion. It's the amalgamation of those characteristics that gives us a prediction about what we think is going on in someone's prostate. Historically, the size of the magnet was a, for example, a 1.5 Tesla, and the Tesla is the unit of how big a magnet is. When we started using MRI scans in the process of screening for prostate cancer, we uh, then shifted to a 3T or a 3 Tesla magnet, which basically gave us higher resolution, a better delineation of what was going on in the prostate. And when used in combination with contrast enhancement and also diff diffusion weighted imaging, we could get a more accurate picture of the probability that someone had cancer. Okay, now the way that we interpret a, an MRI scan is with something called a PIRAD scale. The simplest way to think about this is it's a scale from one to five that predicts the probability that a particular spot in a prostate correlates with a prostate cancer diagnosis. A, a plum normal MRI would be graded as a one and a frankly abnormal uh, MRI scan that correlated very strongly with a prostate cancer diagnosis would be a PIRAD-5. To give you some stats about this, the probability that someone with a PIRAD-4 has cancer is around 75%, and the probability that someone with a PIRAD-5 has cancer is around 95%. The features that we see on the PIRAD 4 and 5, in essence, are the same. It's just the size of the lesion that differs with a PIRAD 5 having a larger lesion than the PIRAD 4. 
It's very common for us to see inflammatory or post-inflammatory features on an MRI scan, and this is often described as a PIRAD2. The gray zone is the PIRAD3, so a, an indeterminate spot, if you like, within the prostate. And the PIRAD3, approximately 30% of people with a PIRAD3 lesion will have significant prostate cancer, as defined basically as a Gleason score of seven or more but 30% will have benign disease only. The way that we manage people who have a PIRAD4 and a PIRAD5 really is for those individuals to proceed on with a targeted biopsy. Now that can be cognitive fusion, or it can be MRI, ultrasound, fused biopsies, where we work out what the spot is itself. So this is a significant change from random biopsies, which used to be the mainstay before the advent of MRI scanning. Now, individuals, if they have a PIRAD3 lesion, so they are in the gray zone effectively, the way that we manage these men depends very much on their age, their wellness, their comorbidities, their family history, so their genetic predisposition. And we try and amalgamate all of those factors together to work out risk and to determine if that man wishes to proceed down a more conservative pathway, does he wish to have a PSMA PET scan to try to reconcile the difference, or does he want to proceed on and have a biopsy? Those are the three pathways that we have access to, really, if someone has a PIRAD3 or an indeterminate spot in their prostate. Now, the next question I often get is, is it possible that the MRI scan gets it wrong? And in essence, it, it is. There is nothing that we do in clinical practice that is 100% accurate, and there is never any margin of error. Now, depending on who does your scan, who reports your scan, the probability of a false negative can vary to a degree. But in the majority of centers that do large volume MRI uh, tests and reports, the probability of a false negative MRI scan is around 10%. And so what that means is that out of every 100 MRI scans that we do that are normal, 10 of those can still have occult or hidden prostate cancer. In the context of an elevated PSA, but an MRI that does not demonstrate prostate cancer, the next step in that pathway is for that man to then have conservative period with a repeat PSA to determine if the PSA normalizes or if it continues to increase. If the PSA continues to increase despite a normal MRI, in my practice at the prostate clinic, that man would then be evaluated with a PSMA PET scan to determine if there is any hot spot within the prostate that wasn't seen on the MRI. If the PET scan does show a spot, we then have a discussion about a biopsy. If there is no hot spot, the next step is to continue on with surveillance. So high probability that the MRI scan gets it correct, but it's not 100% and around 10% can be falsely negative. Okay, where, what are the contexts that an MRI scan is not possible or potentially the MRI scan's information can be limited? Well, the number one situation that we see in clinical practice is in the context if someone has a pacemaker. So there are some MRI scans out there that are um, suitable for individuals that have a pacemaker. However, they tend to be 1.5 Tesla MRIs. So whilst, yes, they can proceed on and on with an MRI scan, the information that we get is not of the same resolution and definition that we get with a 3T. And certainly in my practice, where possible, we proceed on with a PSMA PET scan in that context. It's important to note as well, if you've had a hip replacement, for example, or if you have had previous prostate treatment with a Urolift implant, in this context, men can have some artifacts that can limit the reliability and the interpretability of a particular MRI scan. 
The final context that we use an MRI scan is really in the context of surveillance. So in those individuals with a previous diagnosis of a low grade cancer, which is an ISUP grade one or a Gleason three plus three equals six, those individuals form the mainstay of who we survey and we don't offer definitive therapy to. And the reason why those individuals usually are managed conservatively is because the probability of that disease escaping the prostate, going elsewhere and causing that man harm is exceedingly low. The way that we manage those people really is with monitoring and that monitoring process involves having regular PSA tests. In my practice, I tend to do an MRI scan on an annual basis. And if that individual has had a biopsy showing cancer, I usually repeat the biopsy at the end of the first year to ensure that we haven't missed any grade two cancer or pattern four. And as long as everything is in agreement or concordant, we continue with surveillance, which includes periodic MRI scans uh, moving forward. Sometimes the boundaries of active surveillance are being stretched a little bit. And in older men, we can sometimes, if they have low volume Gleason 3 plus 4 equals 7 or a grade 2 cancer in that cohort, sometimes, depending on the patient profile, we may also survey them with periodic MRI scans. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching the video. If you did get benefit, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, hit the notif notification bell so you don't miss out on our future comment, uh, content. Until the next video, take care of your prostate.